Slow knitting is the act of knitting intentionally. This means that the supplies we choose, the reasons why we knit, and how we actually spend our time knitting are all part of the slow knitting movement. Today, I'm going to share what slow knitting means to me, why it's so countercultural, the benefits I've found over slow knitting, and how to actually practice slow knitting. I'll also bring you through my journey to slow knitting in hopes that if you find yourself somewhere in this timeline right now, it can lead you to a more joyful and slow knitting experience. I used to hear the term slow knitting and imagine someone wearing sad beige clothes, knitting sad beige yarn, unplugged somewhere in the wilderness. While part of that sounded so simple and calm, it also seemed really unattainable for me at my suburban house at the time. Then I realized that I'd let one image or description of someone talking about slow knitting years ago define my whole idea of the practice. While everyone has different values and priorities, even within slow knitting, the umbrella definition is being mindful about why we knit and how we knit. See, some people knit to relieve stress. Other knitters have become more mindful of where their yarn comes from and how it's produced. Many of us care most about knitting intentionally and unrushed, to knit for the process and not just for the end product. And all of us feel the effects of social media, which has brought a rise in consumerism and comparison in the knitting world that wasn't there before, or at least not at our fingertips. I'm somewhere in the camp of defining my version of slow knitting as knitting for the process and not the product. I admit I don't only knit with natural fibers. I enjoy good Hobby Lobby acrylic just as much as 100% wool. And even though I began knitting 15 years ago to relieve stress out of college and it's seen me through four pregnancies, babies, and even postpartum depression, I still primarily knit for the moment of knitting. While I do take my yarn on the go with me, I prefer setting up a cozy space on the couch in the evenings with a warm cup of something seasonal, a little snack, and my knitting. All knitting for me has become slow knitting. Not because I'm in the wilderness or being a yarn snob or because I'm super stressed all the time, but because I choose to set apart my knitting time as cozy and intentional. I no longer race through my knitting projects to be done or hoard yarn just because there's a sale. But my slow knitting is now centered on knitting for joy and that to me is found in cozy knitting moments, knitting well, slowly, instead of rushing through the process. The current culture of knitting on social media is telling us this. Your knitting needs more, faster, bigger, and better. No, seriously, do any of these sound familiar? The first one says that we need more patterns. Recently, our pastor shared a sentiment that went something like this. We live in homes that are bigger than ever before, and we use them less than ever before. For some of us, the same can be said for our yarn stash and our pattern collection. Now, I'm a pattern designer, so I don't point my nose up at designing and pattern releases. While designing is at my livelihood and full-time income, it's become an important creative outlet for me over the past several years, and I'm very grateful for it. Like I said, it's seen me through postpartum depression and contributes to our simple family fun time budget. At the same time, algorithms and the pressure that's put on the designers and dyers alike trickle down to even the hobby knitters. Designers need to churn out new designs multiple times a year to stay relevant. Dyers need new collections for almost every holiday. We're consuming patterns and yarn faster than we did before social media and all the pattern sharing websites existed. And still, we're being shown more and told that we need it all. The next thing we're being told is that we need a bigger yarn stash. I frequently share my yarn in an old painted hutch in photos online. It brings me joy and inspires my knitting, plus it's just plain pretty for our home decor. But recently, I've pared down my yarn stash. It's no longer in that beautiful, gigantic yarn hutch because I just wasn't using it all. Despite a quick scroll on Instagram at the beautiful new yarn collections, I shot my stash first, but I didn't used to. My yarn collection did used to be more of a hoard until I realized that I didn't know what yarn I owned. If it was under the bed or stuffed in the bottom of the hutch, and if I had one ball or five balls. Even though I decluttered my yarn and keep it a realistic size, the temptation to buy more likes to try to sneak back in. 
The sad truth is that we live in a world that makes reels about hiding our yarn in the fridge, lying to husbands about how much was spent on yarn, and buying patterns that we never even will knit. We need to knit faster. Slow knitting is countercultural because we want to knit faster. We'll work on 10 whips or works in progress at a time and learn tips and tricks to use our needles quicker. We even watch knitting influencers make multiple sweaters a month and compare their knitting speed and time devoted to the craft to our own and we end up unhappy. Sometimes we think about our busy days and think, I can't wait to get home and knit later. Only when you get home and knit later, you think to yourself, I have to hurry to finish this blanket by tomorrow's baby shower. What if we shifted our focus around knitting from product to process? That doesn't mean that you don't care about having a finished product. It just means that we focus on enjoying the process and the journey of knitting along the way. We need better tools. Be honest. How many different types of knitting needles do you have? If you're still finding out if you're a bamboo or metal needle lover, keep testing. But if you've already discovered that metal clinking on metal drives you nuts or that tiny nine inch circulars hurt your joints, why are you keeping them? Sometimes we buy and hold on to what was promised by another knitter to be life changing in your knitting. Pom pom makers, looms, blocking mats, insert whatever you just had to have because someone made it look like a must have online. We've all been there. We're constantly being sold from sales that seem like they'll only come once in a lifetime and products that were bought or given to an influencer and are really barely or never really used themselves. As a knitting blogger, I can attest to the struggle of sharing what you love even if it's not trending right then. If you want to knit, the necessities are yarn and needles. Of course, we all like to add some fun project bags, stitch markers, and yarn bowls because we're human. It's when we're constantly collecting the newest, greatest thing that we might want to evaluate what we actually like and use. What are six slow knitting practices that are countercultural? Following your own knitting style, not just the must have patterns or yarn. Taking the time to mend your knit socks instead of casting on or buying new. Buying yarn for the pattern you already bought or saved. Knitting to enjoy the process, not to add to your busyness. Ignoring the pressure to keep up with the Joneses knitting on social media and setting and reaching realistic knitting goals based on your life. What else does slow knitting have going for it? There's a lot of research on how knitting keeps us healthy, but the physical benefits don't actually benefit us if our knitting is actually causing more stress. But the act of intentional slow knitting in particular can have enormous health benefits. When you knit for your own enjoyment, you stay in a calm and mindful mood rather than feeling rushed or competitive. Working with and interacting with natural fibers gives you the benefit of being in nature even when you're indoors. Knitting mindfully keeps you focused on the rhythm of the needles, which has been proven to release serotonin, which is associated with calmness. Slow knitting with other like-minded knitters connects you with a community. Slowing down your knitting regulates your breathing. While slow knitting doesn't necessarily mean that you're a slow knitter speed-wise, it does mean that you knit at your own speed for your own enjoyment. Taking your time to choose patterns, yarn, and curate your knitwear and home collection is more about mindfulness than the actual speed at which you move. So how do we actually practice this slow knitting? Whether you're knitting alone or with a group, practicing slow knitting during the actual act of knitting is important. You have your supplies and I'm going to assume you're knitting and not scrolling Instagram. So this is how we practice slow knitting now that it's actually time to knit. The first is the environment, the feeling. The first way to be intentional and set up a whole slow knitting mood is to focus on your senses. Look around you. Do you have a favorite chair that you knit in? Maybe a favorite side of the bed or couch, or maybe you're a front porch knitter. When you're getting ready to sit down and knit, try to plan out and grab a few things that will make it an even more enjoyable moment. A bath with bubbles, candles, soft lights, and wine is more enjoyable than just a warm tub of water. In the same way, prep your knitting time first. Here are a few ideas. Use warm lights, not fluorescent. I avoid overhead lights altogether and use table side lamps and candles when the sun goes down. 
listen to an audiobook or music. I've been really into the Vampire Knitting Club series by Nancy Warren, and the audiobooks by Sarah Zimmerman are fantastic. I'm also on a big instrumental folk music kick because I can still count stitches in my head, but it's upbeat. Scent is important to me while I'm knitting. It inspires my designing, hence the Sweet Cider Cabin Socks. I'm a big fan of candles that smell like baked goods, so it helps scratch my itch for late night snacking. Watch something easy. In the wintertime when it gets dark by 4.30 p.m. here, I do like to watch TV while knitting. I prefer fun and easy to watch shows like Parks and Rec, The Office, Seinfeld, The New Girl. It makes my knitting more enjoyable too, since there aren't any tense scenes to mess up my stitches or tension. I also really recommend slow TV knitting videos, either straight from Norway or my own YouTube collection. Next, look at the intention. When you're sitting down to knit, it can be helpful to think about why you're knitting. That may seem silly. I mean, you like knitting, right? But let me explain. We all pick up our needles for some reason. Tonight, are you working on yours to relieve stress after a long day? Maybe you're hoping it will bring joy to work on those cables tonight. Sometimes we sit down in a mood ready to learn something new or tackle a new heel technique on our socks. Surrounded by your family, you might be knitting to clothe them or yourself with new Christmas hats to wear while you pick out a tree in a few months. Why are you knitting right now? That might help center your mind and knit with joy Instead of focusing on a stressful deadline or pushing through a hard pattern, past the point of joy just to finish it. Let's talk about the influence. Who are you knitting for? Whether you're knitting to prevent boredom, to heal from something, or to love on those around you, I stand firm on one belief. You should not be knitting out of pressure or competition. Basically, if the reason why you're knitting is because you're under pressure to finish a gift, or you feel jealous of a project you saw online, then you're more focused on keeping up with the Joneses than you are about knitting for your own enjoyment. Not everyone falls prey to this, but next time you're choosing yarn or a pattern, ask yourself this, am I knitting for my own joy or to impress someone else? The last way to practice slow knitting is through your yarn. The slow living movement is heavily centered around knowing the full story of something. In knitting and with yarn in particular, it means knowing a whole story from sheep to yarn. Admittedly, this is still something that I'm learning about. Few knitters dive into learning about where and how wool is sourced or what acrylic yarn really is, or how superwash wool is made when they first start knitting. When we first start knitting, many of us start with cheap craft store yarn. Some of us stay there because it's all we know and others of us because it's all we can afford. So while this is a big part of slow knitting, I consider myself still learning and creating a closet that reflects more natural and local yarns. As I decide what patterns to knit and the yarn to match, I'm definitely moving towards more rustic and natural yarns. Here are a few great resources for learning more about carefully sourcing your yarns. The Woolful Podcast and the book Slow Knitting by Hannah Thiessen. And that's what slow knitting means to me. This summer, I've really enjoyed slow knitting in nature. Again, this doesn't have to be in the wilderness alone. In your yard, on your deck, or next to a big window also counts. But in nature, you're able to immerse yourself in the sights and sounds. So by the seaside, in the woods, watch out for ticks, or on your patio, those are all knitting in nature. Nature sounds have their own rhythm and sitting outside knitting helps your heart rate slow. It regulates your breathing and syncs your body to the seasonal rhythms. While I was skeptical at first, I found I enjoyed knitting in nature. When I'm outside, I'm less likely to look around and see my to-do list like I am inside. That means that you can actually just sit and knit and that sounds like actually enjoying the knitting process. Slow knitting in nature also helps guide my knitting calendar naturally. I'm more likely to see a project through if I'm realistic about the kind of yarn and project I'm knitting. No wool sweaters in July because I'm not knitting them inside in the air conditioning. One last note about slow knitting actually comes from the idea of cottage style home decor. It's the idea of collecting, not hoarding, pieces and decorations for your home over time instead of running out to Target to knock out your wants list in a day. One person who does this really well is Andrea of Pine and Prospect Home, 
She used a less than loved chair as a placeholder for a future dream chair. This served as two purposes. She was able to make sure that it was the spot she wanted a chair before impulse buying one, and she eventually ended up with her dream unique chair. Even though it takes longer to fill up or feel like it's completed, we can use the cottage style gathering, or in this case, making, in our own knitwear and home collection. Is it easier to run out to a store or get next day shipping to fill up a spring closet? Yes. But I believe in quality over quantity and slow knitting a me made wardrobe that's truly your style. I'm currently building up my hand knit box of socks. I know it will take time and I'm trying to mix in shorty socks for summer and cabin socks for winter. But knowing that they'll last longer than cheap socks is huge. Plus, I know how to mend hand knit socks, but not tiny machine knit socks with cheap materials. So do you need to get more intentional in your knitting time? Do you guard your heart against the tempting newness of yarn and accessories we see online? Are you good about sourcing your yarn? Get out and knit in nature? Slow knitting looks different for all of us. We have different values and different lifestyles. But when we're mindful about why we knit and how we knit, we can enjoy our knitting time all together. Thank you so much for joining me. I pray that this video was a blessing to you and helps direct you to more joyful knitting. If you have other slow knitting suggestions that you use, or just want to say hi, please leave a comment below. You can also connect with me at thisyellowfarmhouse.com and on Instagram at thisyellowfarmhouse. Stay cozy.